Welcome back to another video. In this video, we will be analyzing Amazon Alexa dataset available on Kaggle to train a neural network model for sentiment analysis classification. The dataset consists of nearly 3000 customer reviews from Amazon on various products. If you want to know how to implement a machine learning model for sentiment analysis on this dataset, you can check out my video on this topic. The link to the dataset and other links mentioned in this video can be found in the description box below. If you are new to this channel and like my content, please hit the like button and smash the subscribe button and turn on bell notification so that you don't miss any updates. Stay tuned. So first let's import the required libraries. So here we are importing pandas for basic data operations, we are importing matplotlib and cbond for data visualization, we are importing style to set a style for the plots and here we are using ggplot, then we are importing re for using the regex function, then we are importing word tokenize to perform tokenization, we are importing porter stemmer to perform stemming, we are importing stop words to remove the stop words and we are setting the stop words as english, then we are importing word cloud to plot the word cloud. Then we are using count vectorizer to vectorize the data and then we are importing train test split to perform train test split on our data. Now that we have imported the libraries, let's read the data from the file. Note that the file here is a TSV file format. So to read the data, we need to specify the separator being used. Now that we have loaded the file, let's visualize the data using the head function. Now let's use the info method to gain some more information about the data set. Now we have an idea about the number of columns, the rows, the data types and different entries. Let's now analyze each column further. Let's start with the rating column. This indicates the different ratings given by the customers. Let's use a count plot to see the distribution of the different ratings. Now we have a count plot of the different ratings. We can also use a pie chart to see the percentage distribution of the different ratings. So let's specify a size for the pie chart. Now let's specify the different tags in our pie chart. Now let's plot the pie chart. Let's also add a heading to this. Now we have a visual representation of the distribution of the sentiments. This is a simple pie chart and if you want, we can customize it to make it look much better. So let's add custom colors for the different sentiments.
we can also add the line width and the edge color for the pie chart we can also export the different pies Now let's add these modifications into the plot and also specify the start angle and add a shadow to the plot. Now we have a more customized pie chart. Let's now analyze the next column, Variations. The Variations column in this dataset is used to indicate the different product variations being sold on Amazon on which the customers have commented. Just like we did for the Ratings column, we can also use a count plot to see the distribution of the different products. Now we have a count plot showing the different product variations. We can also plot the variations on the y-axis if required to make it more visually appealing. So there we have a count plot of the different product variations. Now instead of plotting a graph, you can also use a value count to obtain a count of the different product variations. Now we have an actual number of how many of these products are there in a data set. Let's now analyze the feedback column. Now this is our target column and is used to indicate if the comments given by the users are positive or negative. 1 is used to indicate a positive comment and 0 is used to indicate a negative comment. So let's use count plot as before. Instead of using a count plot, we can also use a pie chart to see the distribution of the different sentiments. Now we have a pie chart showing the different user sentiments. Notice the similarity with the ratings pie chart. What do you infer? Let me know in the comment section below. Now that we have done some initial analysis on our data, let's proceed to process the text data to make it ready for model building. So let's first analyze some of the user reviews. So here I am printing the first 5 user reviews. Now that we have an idea of the data that we are dealing, let's proceed to process this data. 
Data processing is done to make the data into a usable format. There are different steps involved to make the data into a usable format. You can do them individually on the text data or what I'm going to do here is to create a function that does all of the text processing and then I'm going to pass my data into it. So let's define the function to do the different text processing methods. First, let's perform lowercase conversion. Then let's remove any URLs. Then let's proceed to remove the punctuations. Then let's perform tokenization and remove the stop words. Now let's apply pre-processing function on our text data. Oh, okay. Let's also perform stemming on the data. Here for this project, I am going to use a Porter stemmer. You can also use any other type of stemmer such as Lancaster stemmer or Snowball stemmer or even lemmatization instead of stemming. The Python codes to perform these are there in my tutorial videos. Now let's perform stemming. I am defining a function here as well. Now let's apply stemming to the process data. Now let's analyze the same text as before to see the effect of the process text data. Now that we have processed the text data, let's visualize the positive and negative data using a word cloud. To do this, I'm going to separate the positive and negative data. Now let's use a word cloud to visualize the positive reviews.
So here we are pulling in text data from the positive reviews and then we are setting a figure size, then we are generating the word cloud and then finally we are adding a heading to the word cloud. Now if you want more detailed explanation about word cloud or if you want to take your word cloud to a next level, you can check out my video on this topic. I'll add links to it in the description down below. Similarly, let's do it for the negative reviews. So first we'll separate the negative reviews. Then let's use a word cloud to visualize the negative reviews. So there we have a word cloud for the negative reviews as well. Now that we have processed the data, let's split the data into X and Y. And as we are creating a sentiment analysis model, our X data will contain the verified reviews of the users and the Y data will contain the feedback of the users in terms of the sentiment polarity. Now that we have split the data, let's vectorize the data before moving on to model building. So let's load the count vectorize and fit runs from the data. Now let's split the data into training and testing set with a test size of 20%. Now let's put in the size of the training and testing data. Now there's one more thing left to do before building a neural network and that is to convert the X data into an ND array. We will be using two array to convert the X data to an ND array. Now let's import the libraries to create a neural network model. Sequential help to create a neural network model layer by layer and dense is used to define the dense layers in a neural network. Now that we have imported the libraries. Let's define a neural network model. So model equal to sequential. Here we are loading the sequential library so we can add layers to our model. Now let's add the first dense layer to our model. Here I am going to set 16 neurons for the first layer with a relu activation function. For the first dense layer, we also need to specify the size of the input dimension. So this is going to be our input layer.
now let's say the second layer and this is going to be a hidden layer and i'm setting eight neurons for a hidden layer with our radio activation function now let's set the output layer and since our output has only two values i'm going to set one node for the output layer with a sigma activation function Now that we have specified the different layers of the models, let's define the optimizer, the loss function and the matrix used for the model using model.compile. These values can vary based on the application and here I am using rmsprop as the optimizer, binary cross entropy to calculate the loss and accuracy to measure the model accuracy. Now let's run the network after fitting the training data. Here I'm specifying a batch size and a POC of 10. Batch size is used to indicate the number of samples being passed through the neural network at a given time. Epoch indicates the number of times a neural network is trained with the entire training data. Usually, training the neural network for a larger number of epochs can lead to an improvement in the accuracy of the neural network model. We can also see the summary of the model that we created using the model summary function. Now let's evaluate the model performance by measuring the accuracy and the losses on the test data. Now let's plot a graph of accuracy and loss to see its change over the epochs. As we can see, now we have a visual representation of how the loss and accuracy changes after each epoch. Now let's vary the neural network parameters to see the change in the output. So for the second model configuration, I'm changing the number of neurons.
so here I am reducing the number of neurons and if you run this As we can see, the model accuracy has gone down a bit. Similarly, we can tweak the different parameters in the neural network to change the performance of the model. That brings us to the end of this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.